Hi everyone, welcome to my basic acrylic application workshop. In this workshop I'm going to be teaching you basic acrylic application as well as bead control and also how to refine that shape. I really hope you enjoy it, so let's get started. Hi everyone, so in this workshop I'm going to be teaching you your bead pickup, your placement, your bead control and your zone placement for your acrylic. So I've got my monomer ready in my dappen dish, okay, and the monomer I'm using is from the Naokami Genesis acrylic system um, and this is the professional speed monomer they do do a medium speed it's entirely up to you which one you're comfortable using um, and I'm also using part of the Genesis range and I'm using the core powder okay now this is a full cover core powder in blossom and the reason I'm using that is so that you guys can see my bead pickup and placement a lot easier for the purposes of the video so I'm just going to pop those to one side just for a second and the way we are taught at the beginning when we are learning how to do acrylic is to use a bead placement sheet. So this is my personal bead placement sheet and it's available on my website at www.laurenmcbridenailartist.com and it has, it's laminated so you can reuse it, okay, and it has your bead pickup and sizing bead control and then there is also another sheet where you can practice your smile lines your zone bead placement and how to put all your skills together to create a nail so I'm just going to pop this one to one side and I'm going to be working on my bead placement sizing and bead control to begin with so I'm just going to go through with you how to pick up a bead so a lot of people have difficulty in this with regard to getting the right size bead and also not getting any air bubbles or anything like that in your acrylic. So the first thing I'm going to do is teach you how to pick up, pick up a bead from your pot of powder. So I'm using the Naokami A8 brush. I think a eight brush is a nice size to be able to work with. It's great for smile lines and it's also great for everyday use within the salon, okay? You can go higher. Sometimes I work with a 10, um, but an eight is a nice size, especially for beginners and more advanced tech. It's a nice all round brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is load my brush with the monomer. So you don't want to be doing this because what that's doing, it's creating air bubbles within your brush. You can see the air bubbles in my dappen dish that by doing a swirl, that has created. And that's what we don't want. You need to use a firm push down motion so your brush fans out so that all of those bristles absorb that monomer. Okay, so pushing that down nice and firm. And you can see if there's any air bubbles, they will rise out of your brush and then remove the excess from my brush on the side of my dappen dish. Okay, so that's the first thing not to do. Do not swell your brush. You need to push it down and make sure that you've got a nice even consistency of that monomer distributed within your brush. So the next mistake people tend to do is to go in with their bead pickup and they do this. You do not want to do that. So I'm just going to get rid of that bead. And the reason you don't want to do that is because every time you go into your powder, lift it out and go back in again, you're creating a layer of air in between each layer of that powder. So you may not notice it in a cover pink um, or a white, but you will most certainly notice it in a clear um, acrylic powder. So if you're encapsulating and you're doing your pickup like this, you are gonna create air bubbles in that acrylic bead and we don't want that. A lot of people also 
go in using a line so they start here and they come along and they pick up their bead that way now that's absolutely fine um, but personally I don't do that you can do that it's not a problem at all if that's where you've been trained to do it then by all means keep doing that but what I do is I just put my brush down hold it and then lift it out so there's no air being transferred into my brush as I'm picking up that bead so I'm going in at a 45 degree angle okay and picking up that bead so I'll just show you that again going in at a 45 degree angle touching my brush on the top and picking up my bead now it takes some practice to learn how much monomer is in your brush to how big a bead you need to pick up and obviously the size of your bead is going to change depending on what it is that you're doing and that's where our bead placement and sizing chart comes into play because it means we can go into our powder with all different levels of consistency and pop it on and see how that spreads so that's quite a wet bead and it's spread quite quickly and it's gone out of the line of our circle so if I just show you that a little bit closer that's a wet bead you can see it running down that paper so as far as product control and bead control goes that is not very good I had too much monomer in my brush and my bead was far too big so if we were doing that on a client it would mean that the product would soak into their side walls and you would be chasing that bead all over the place now this next one I've worked slightly drier and you can see I haven't had as much spread but I have had spread to the edge of that circle which is what we want and I'll just show you again I'm working drier still I'm just placing that bead down and that hasn't got as much spread but it is going to the edge of our circle so that there has given us the exact size of our circle that we want and that is where these bead practice sheets come into play because it means that we can continue to place our beads until we get the correct amount and ratio of monomer to powder to be able to work consistently with our product now I have also got these smaller light smaller circles here so again we would need a lot less product a lot less monomer in our brush to pick up a smaller bead and place that in our circle okay so you can see there that has filled the circle now obviously this our consistency of our monomer to polymer so our liquid to our powder is going to change on the temperature of our environment so on a hotter day we need to work slightly wetter and on a colder day we need to work slightly drier in order to get that correct consistency so that one's too wet and as you can see it is spreading out around outside of our circle line so I would always recommend if there is an extreme in temperature on a particular day to get out your practice sheet before your clients come in and just have a little practice and a little feel for that product so that you know how wet or how dry you need to work for that day. Because this bead for example was really quite wet but if it's a really hot day then that would have set a lot quicker than this one for example so this one would have been too dry so we would have got the same correct ratio but just depending on our our environment nice thing about being able to practice our beads means that we don't have that trial and error when our clients come in and we're chasing those beads around there now it's much better 
be chasing our beads around this practice sheet than it is to be doing it on an actual client because we don't want to overexpose their skin or their um, nails or fingers to our product and obviously that would cause contraindications. So this is a great way of practicing our mix ratio and how to pick up our beads correctly in order to create our zone placement. Now on this next section here, we have got bead control. So we've got squares and rectangles and diamonds, okay? So the idea of this section is to be able to pick up a bead, okay? Place it down on our bead practice sheet, let it settle just for a few seconds like we would on someone's nail, and then we can go in and practice our bead control to be able to fill that shape with our product, okay? So this is really good, it's the next stage from picking up our bead. This is really good to practice when it comes to our zone placement. Because once we've got the control of our bead correct, we can then move on to the patting out technique. So with this, we are picking up a bead, okay? We are popping it on our bead placement sheet. We're letting it settle. And then we are patting out that product down and then up. And we need to make sure that our product is nice and consistent with regard to depth of color as well as thickness. So by doing it this way, it means that we are not only controlling our bead, but also we're refining how we pat out that product, okay? And once we've learned how to do this, it enables us not to have to work too much with our file. So the idea is when we're doing acrylic nails is to make sure we're laying in that shape with, so like our apex and our C curves, we're laying that in with our acrylic. Don't think, oh, I can file that out. You need to lay in your foundations with your acrylic. So with these smaller squares, obviously we're using a much smaller bead, but you can go in and you can see how much play time you have as well. So if you've got a new acrylic system, um, or you've got core powders and colored acrylics, you can have a play with them before you actually go in and use them on a real client so that you can get your consistency correct for that product, okay? So you can go back to it, flatten it out using the tapping motion to be able to control that product. So I'm just gonna show you a larger one again. So again, picking up our bead, placing it in the center, okay? Letting it settle, let it do its thing just for a little while. And then you can also work, because this bead was slightly drier, once I've patted it out, it means we've got a thicker consistency within that triangle okay so you can see this one's a lot thicker so this is great to be able to practice reverse French because obviously when we do a reverse French you need to be able to create that wall to then be able to go in and create that smile line okay so the bead practice sheet once they're set you can actually just pick that off 
because that acrylic is now set you can pick that off and reuse this as many times as you want okay so I'm just going to pop that to one side also with the bead um, practice sheets you have got your smile lines so if you're not doing a reverse French or if you're new to acrylic I would highly recommend that you practice your smile lines in the classic way because not only does it teach you bead control but it also enables you to get that nice crisp smile line without having to do a reverse French and this is great for colour blocking as well okay so you can see I popped my bead on there I let it settle and then I pushed it down from one side to the other and with smile lines you'll always find one side easier than the other okay it depends on whether you're a lefty or a righty naturally I'm um, always go to the left because I'm right handed if you're left handed you will naturally go to the right okay so I'll just show you that again I'm picking up my bead I'm popping it down into the center of that smile line okay so then I am pushing that product up to a point this side up to a point that side and then coming in reversing my brush and crisping up that smile line and what you want to do is to create like a wall because obviously this would be done in white and then you would be putting your pink in after. I'm creating a wall here so that when I come to put my pink on, that line doesn't get lost, okay? So again, patting it out, making sure that it's nice and even and consistency and thickness all the way round, using my brush, and popping that product exactly where I want it. Now this sheet also contains the zone bead placement. So this has got two zones and then there's three zones and then there's one zone. So it completely depends on the style of nail that you are doing. But what we would normally do is go into zone, the first zone. So this would be our cuticle line, okay controlling our product and then you want to taper that down into the next zone so we would refine it around the cuticle on the side wall making sure there's no product touching the skin and then we would go in with our second bead overlaying that slightly and bringing it out and either making a reverse French or we would already have our French line in here and tapping that bead out into our previous zone. Now you can do nails obviously dependent on the size in one bead so this is great for encapsulation so again working with your bead control pushing it back into the cuticle and then pulling it down to what would be our free edge. And then again, tidying up our side walls and patting out that product, okay? Now here is larger sizes of nails going to smaller sizes of nails so I'm going to work on the larger one just for the purposes of the video so you guys can see in this one you can practice your reverse French so popping that bead down pushing that into what what would be the cuticle and then pulling it out and then you can practice your reverse French application so you can pop in that smile line and what will happen the more you do this and the more you practice you will get muscle memory so you will remember without realizing it how you have placed that bead to get that effect 
So with a reverse, you need to build that wall. Okay. And then obviously you would wait for that to cure and then you could go in with your white and create that reverse French. And you can also add your free edge bead down to the sides and pulling that product out and tapering it to the free edge. Again, pushing that product where you want it to go, controlling that product for the whole time and making sure it's a nice, consistent, even application, okay? And then tap out that product making sure that you've got a nice even consistency throughout the entirety of the nail. Okay, so once you have practiced on your bead placement sheets, you are then ready to move on to a nail. So I've got a nail tip here. Obviously I haven't prepared it in any way, shape or form um, because it is just a tip. Obviously if you were working on a client, you would have done your prep routine, your cuticle work and everything else. So I'm just gonna talk you through the zones. So you've got zone one, which is the back third. You've got zone two, which is your middle section, and you've got zone three, which is what I would refer to as your free edge bead, okay? So obviously this is quite a long tip. If they had shorter nails, so if their nail ended here, you would be able to do it in two beads. Obviously if you're doing it in French, you would do the French line and then your pink, okay? So I'm just gonna show you how to place your beads if you were doing a full cover. So I've popped my bead on there and I'm just waiting for that to do its thing and just settle. And then you would push that to one side, but also pushing it down into that cuticle line and then to the other, okay? Using a firm tapping motion. You don't wanna be doing this because that's not gonna do anything. You need to control your product and push it down into the nail plate and also into the shape that you want it to go into. So if I turn that to the side, I've got a bit of a wall here and I don't want that. I want to taper that out. So now <clears throat> I'm using a tapping pulling motion. So you tap and drag down into that next zone. And by doing that, what we are doing, we're creating an area. So once we place our second bead on here, okay, that will taper up and we will get a nice consistent color. Obviously, if this was clear, you wouldn't be worrying too much about the color consistency, but it's really important when we're working with pinks or certainly cover pinks. So I'm now gonna go into my second zone. Again, placing that bead down making sure that it's exactly where I want it, tapping it down into my side walls, controlling that product, okay? And now I'm gonna feather that product back into my first bead. So we create that color consistency, and now I'm pulling it down tapping as I go into my final bead placement area. Okay. And then for my final bead, I'm gonna do it on the free edge. So again, placing my bead down, waiting for it to settle and then tapping out that product right to our free edge. Feathering that product back up 
into our second bead and then using our product to get that nice even consistency of colour and making sure that we've got a nice even consistency with regard to thickness as well. So if I turn that down you can see We've got no ugly lumps or bumps. It's already a nice even consistency. Now, if we were doing someone's nails that were this length, we would need to pop in an apex. So for this length now, it would be in your back third and we would pop that in like so. Okay, and then taper that out and pat it down into our cuticle line and keeping the main body of that product in that apex area and then feathering out our product down into that middle section all the way to our free edge so we have just popped an apex in there okay so now obviously if we were doing a small line we wouldn't be starting at the cuticle we would be starting on our free edge so <clears throat> what i'm going to do now i'm just going to show you all right how to do that because obviously this is working as a full color nail so in order to do a small line we need to start the other way around we need to start in zone three rather than in zone one so i'm just going to grab my white acrylic powder just to be able to show you a classic smile line so this is lily from the genesis range okay <clears throat> And I've got my tip here so this is an extreme stiletto okay and again if we were doing this on a client we will have um, prepped the nail ready for acrylics another thing is always tap out so I've got lots of dents in there where I've been picking up my bead always either give it a shake or a tap so you've got a nice even surface to be able to pick your beads up because that will help to create a nice even bead pickup as well. So don't keep going back into the dents that you've created. Likewise, if it's slightly slanted like this one, make sure you tap it out and then you've got a nice even surface to work on to be able to pick up your beads. Okay, so with a small line, I'm gonna pick up a bead with my white and this is a classic smile line so I want to put it I want this to be where I want my smile lines highest point to be okay so I've let that bead do what it wants to do and just spread out slightly and I'm now going to use my tapping motion to push down that product into what I call my bunny ears okay and then I'm going to pull that product out using gravity to help me pull that product with a tapping pulling and smoothing motion all the way to the end of that nail so now what I'm going to do I'm going to go back in and I'm going to refine this smile line I'm going to use the tip of my brush just to be quite firm with that product and push it to where I want it to be. Okay, so I've got my center point and I'm pushing that product where I want it to be to create, this is quite an extreme smile line. 
So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to refine that smile line. And this is quite a wet bead. And pull that down and over. And again, go in with the tip of my brush and just smooth out that smile line. So we want to cause a bit of a ridge and I'll show you the side of the enhancement in a second because when we come to put in our pink we want it to sit in that well that we've created here in our smile line. And I'm also, because my bead wasn't quite big enough just going to pop my little tiny bit on the end there and I'm just going to feather that back up into that white so we don't get a ridge of colour. I'm also going to refine this bunny ear slightly because it's not quite as thick as I want it to be. Now what I would do if I was doing a client I would be doing all five of my smile lines on one hand, okay? Because what's going to happen is if we went in with our pink now on this, it would get really mucky because it's not fully set, okay? So if I was to go in with my pink now on this, it would make our white really mucky and we would lose that crispness. So, I've just crisped up that other bunny ear and that has created our smile line. So, if I turn this, you can see it's a nice even consistency on our thickness of our nail. Okay, so you can see there it's nice and even and consistent got a tiny little bit there I need to get rid of. It's nice, nice, even and consistent all the way across that nail. But if we look down this way, you can see I've created like a wall. And that's where we want our pink to sit. Now, if we were doing a reverse French, this would be the other way around. So we would be doing our pink and creating that wall with our pink, okay? But this is the traditional way to learn how to do your smile lines. So again, I'm going to go in with my cover pink, just so you guys can see. And I'm going to go into my second zone, all right, which is my middle zone. So don't be tempted to start at the cuticle line. because you're not going to get that consistency with the product. So we're working backwards to if we were doing a full cover. So I'm just tapering that up over my smile line. Okay, <clears throat> because when we come to file, that smile line will pop back out. So I'm just going to go in now with my second bead of pink and because this is quite a long nail I'm not going to attempt to do my cuticle line and this second area of pink with one bead we're going to do it with two just like if it was a short nail we would be doing it in the whole nail in two beads probably. So I'm just tapping out that product, tapering it down into that first bead of pink. Okay, and now I'm gonna go in and do my cuticle line. So again, picking up my bead, popping it on my cuticle line, letting it settle And 
and then taking it up to the left and then to the right making sure that that is nice and flush against their natural nail and then feathering that product over. So I'm just going to push this product with the belly of my brush being nice and firm. You don't want to be doing this. You want to be nice and firm and push that product exactly where you want it to go and then feathering it down and out to where we want it to be. Now because this is an extreme length now I am going to pop in that apex which is going to go in my back third. So popping that on, feathering it out. You want to feather it out first because you don't want this to start setting and you have that line there. Feathering it out to my cuticle line and then pushing again. Okay, so I've popped my apex in there. All right, so you can see from that side view, we've now got our apex. And I'm gonna file this in so that you guys can see. So I'm just gonna pop that there. And I would always, always, always recommend to put your brush away, okay, before you start filing. And to make sure that you put your lids back on top of your powders because you do not want these contaminated. If we were to start filing and our lids were off of our powders and our monomer, you would contaminate them and they would start to yellow and you would have germs and it's just gonna open up a whole world of issues that you really don't want to be happening with your acrylic products, okay? So I'm just waiting for that to set, and as soon as that's set, I'll be back with you to file this nail in. Okay, so this acrylic has now cured, all right? And the way to make sure that we know when it's ready to file is by tapping it. So you need to tap either with the end of your brush or your file to make sure that there's a nice clear tap okay so tap at the end right the way back to the cuticle line down the sides and back down through the middle and that's a nice clear tap so that is ready to go so hopefully you guys will have watched my filing routine workshop which is in the announcement section on the main group page or on YouTube. So I don't need to explain my filing routine, but no matter what shape nail we are doing, the filing routine remains the same. Okay, so I'm gonna go down my side walls. making sure that they're nice and flush. And a French always looks really messy until we file, especially with acrylic, because you haven't got that crisp line in your smile line, but it is there. So it's one of those processes that you have to just trust the process. Okay, I'm just gonna take that off my stand because it makes it a lot easier to be able to file. I'm going in along my cuticle line, being careful not to remove that apex because we want that in there to be able to give our nail strength. Going along my free edge. Okay, so you can see that white color is that much brighter now 
because we haven't got that pink we've just filed that out and I'm just going to take off that sharp edge make it slightly more rounded okay so now what I'm going to do I'm going to start over my apex and mark, work my way down the nail so I'm just going to pop it back on the stand okay I'm going to marry up my side wall lines over my apex working my way all the way down the nail to meet that free edge and then obviously going over that small line making sure we remove that pink to take it down to that wall that we created with our white and that's why the thickness of our white needed to be even and consistent so that when we come to filing we've got that product there and it's nice and even and consistent in colour. If we had a divot or a dent in this small line or our acrylic powder, you would see that in the white. It would show up as a darker area. So that's why bead control is really important when it comes to doing your French or your pink and whites because it is creating that consistency in colour. Okay, so I'm just going over that, making sure that it's nice and even. I'm just going back into my apex and just blending that out, making sure we're looking down the barrel of the nail and it's nice and even, which it is. I'm just going to do that underside. Obviously, normally we wouldn't work this way round, but because I'm working on a tip, I am. It's just easier to hold on to that tip while we're filing. And notice when I'm filing as well, I'm going one way. I'm not concentrating my filing in one area. I'm not doing this motion because we don't want to create generate any heat. So I'm just making sure from my side it's nice and even. From my other side it's nice and even. We've got a nice straight line coming out from that apex. I'm just gonna scooch over this back section again. Obviously this would be the area that's going down into our client's natural nail. So we don't want a ridge. I'm just tidying up that. So looking down the barrel of the nail. Okay, making sure if I just put my hand behind, you'll be able to see. Just making sure it's nice and even on both sides. It's nicely tapered in. Okay. So now I'm going to go over with my white block buffer. Now I'm not actually, because I'm using a tip, I'm using my white block. But when I come to do clients and we need to use disposable files, I am actually going to be using these. So these are mini buffers so you can see the difference in size okay and these come in a pack of 24 and it means that you can just get one of these out these are from Nalkme they're 100 grit you can get one of these out use it on your client and then throw it away okay so it means that with regard to sanitation and the need for disposable files now on clients or single use files they're great to use but because I'm working on a tip I'm using my white block so 
So I'm just going over the entirety of that nail. And then I'm going to go in with my 200 grit buffer. And this removes any sort of scratch that's been left behind from our files. Okay, I'm going to pop it back on the stand. And I'm going to pop a little bit of matte top coat on there just so you can see that finished smile line. So I'm just going to dust it off. Dust off my hand. Okay, and I'm going to use the no wipe top coat. I'm going to pop that on. Nice even coat all the way to the length of that tip. Making sure we cap those ends. And you can see we've created a really nice crisp smile line. Okay, with our pink and white. So this is to be able to create a nail that's got a nice colour consistency throughout the white and the pink and a nice even consistency of thickness throughout the entire nail. It is, it's so, so important that you practice your pickup of your bead and your placement of your bead and your control of your bead because without that, without those basic skills, you're not going to be able to create even and consistent nails with your acrylic, okay? So thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video. So that completes my basic acrylic application workshop. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you did, please make sure you click the like button and if you'd like to see any future videos, make sure you click the subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.